everyone. Welcome back to The Beauty of Grace. My name is Lynette, and today I want to talk to you, how can a person be demon-possessed? And this may be a topic that you may have thought about or heard about. Uh, we've seen movies on this, The Exorcist, where the girl's head was going round and round and all that, all that stuff. But how can a person be demon-possessed in 20 21 how how does that happen or is that still real okay we read about this um in the bible how people were demon possessed and so forth but is that still real for today is it still relevant today well the answer is yes people there are people that are demon possessed that walk on this earth okay um how can a person be demon possessed i'm glad you asked a person can be demon-possessed if they have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If they are not saved, then demons can enter into a person. All right? And it can be where it's not just one demon. It can be a legion of demons. Let's look. I'm going to go to the scripture, and um, I'm going to show you about a man that had a legion of demons. Go to Mark 5. All right. And in this chapter of Mark 5, there was a man that had a legion of demons. Okay. And he was violent. All right. They would put chains on him and so forth, and he would break the chains. All right. A lot of times, people that are demon possessed, they are very violent. That's why sometimes we look at these shows, these dateline shows, and, and shows like that. Uh, where you hear about horrific murders and stuff like that. A lot of times they're done by people that are demon-possessed. And this man, in this, uh, in this chapter of the Bible, this man would, would cut himself. All right? So sometimes, and that's a spirit. There are people that have an addiction of cutting themselves. That's a spirit, okay, where they want to hurt themselves, want to harm themselves. They may have may feel guilty about something they've done in the past or whatever, and they want to hurt themselves. That's a spirit, okay? That's not God. Uh, that's not of God, all right? So this man had a legion of demons, and, and if you read, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but this would be good for you to read and study about, all right? And, and Jesus came and... Uh, delivered this man from the demons. He cast the demons out into the swine. There were some swine, some pigs that were out there, and he cast the demons over, over there, okay, into the swine, because that's what the demons asked, if they could go into the swine, and he permitted them to do so, all right? So, that's, that, it, it may sound scary, but if you're not saved, you can be demon-possessed, okay? Now, Another question that I think some people ask as Christians, they may say, well, can a Christian be demon-possessed once you're saved? All right, well, I'm going to answer that. Let's go to John 14, 16. John 14, 16. All right. And in this um, chapter of John 14, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit is going to do. John 14, 16 says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Okay. So Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit is going to come, and he's going to be your helper, and he's going to abide with you forever. All right. So when a Christian becomes saved and the Holy Spirit is dwelling on the inside of you, no demon can possess you, all right? Now, demons can mess, they can uh, 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 put thoughts, bad thoughts and stuff in our mind, all right? They may whisper stuff in our minds, in our ears or whatever, okay? But they cannot possess you when you have the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit is your protector, he is the spirit of truth, and he is all-powerful, okay? So you are protected. Now, I read a book um, years ago, 
um, a pastor's wife gave me a book called Pigs in the Parlor. And uh, this book, I, I was reading it and, it, and it began talking about Christians and how they can become uh, possessed by demons. And that book, uh, it, it really made me afraid because I'm like, wow, I, I didn't know that Christians can be possessed by demons. I didn't know that. And, you know, but anyway, as, as, as I began to uh, study further, and begin to grow in the knowledge of Christ, and you learn, then you find out that you cannot be possessed by demons. All right, let's go to Colossians 1.27. Let's see what that said, because I want to back this up with scripture, because there are a lot of Christians that believe that Christians can still be possessed by demons, and that's not true, because the devil is not stronger than the Spirit of God. Because if we say that Christians can be possessed by demons, then that's what we're saying, that the devil can push the Holy Spirit out and then they can possess a Christian. It's no way. Nope, not possible. All right. Uh, Col Colossians 1.27 says, For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. Christ lives in you, Christians, man and woman of God. And then the scripture says, this gives you assurance of sharing his glory. That is God on the inside of you. So don't be fearful. Don't think that uh, you can be possessed by demons, that, that you have done something so bad or thought something so bad or made some big mistake or done some type of sin where you can be possessed by demons. You cannot be possessed by demons. Only people that are not saved can be possessed by demons. Okay. And, and, and so we want you to, if you're not saved, and you want to be saved. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner and save me. And if you said that and you meant that, then you become a Christian. You become an heir of God and a joint heirs of Christ. And no demon can possess you. The Holy Spirit possesses you now. We are possessed by the Holy Spirit. I love it. We are possessed by the Holy Spirit, and that's a good possession to be possessed by him, okay? Because, you know, he's our, our teacher. He's our GPS, okay? He uh, leads and guides us each and every day, okay? So, we love the Holy Spirit, all right? Let's go to Hebrews 13 and 5. Maybe some of you still don't believe what I'm saying. Okay. Maybe some of you might have heard that. Um, no. Because it is possible that the Holy Spirit will leave you. And then you can get possessed by demons. Okay. Well, I have a video that um, have done very well. When, that I've done about uh, with, can, will the Holy Spirit leave you. And if you haven't seen that video, go check that video out. But uh, let's go to verse Hebrews 13, verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I want to focus, guys, on that never. He says, I will never leave you. So be, conv be convinced, saints of God, that the Holy Spirit will never leave you. Never. We know what never means. Look, we can look it up. Never means never. I will never leave you. The New Living Translation said, I will never abandon you. But I like it where he says, I will never leave you. And, and I don't know why sometimes some Christians just don't want to believe that God is that good. That once he saves you, he saves you forever. I, I don't know. They want to um, 
just believe that, you know, it's all about their behavior and what they do or don't do, regardless whether the Holy Spirit will stay with you or not, whether he will leave you. And then you'll be possessed by demons. And unfortunately, a lot in a lot of church circles, that is taught. It's taught that uh, a Christian can be uh, demon possessed. If you really bad and you do bad things and your behavior and you don't do this, uh, you're possessed. They tell people you're possessed by a demon. You're doing all this stuff and all this. <sighs> That's why we have the word. Saints, read your word. Read your word. They, they have the word in all different translations where it's easier to understand. We have no excuse. This scripture right here says, I will never leave you. Never. I've got another one more scripture that I want to give you if you're still not convinced. Ephesians 1 verse 13. It says, in him. You also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You, There's a seal that's on you. You are sealed. There's a mark that's on you where the devil knows he cannot enter inside of you. Okay. Now, if you're not saved, you are opening yourself up where you can be possessed. All right. Now, sometimes there are people that are possessed by demons. They might not be violent, but they still might be possessed. I don't know. But um, I do say this. If you're not saved, you can be possessed by a demon. All right. Or demons. Okay, but as for Christians, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You are God's property. God paid a price for you so that you can be free in him. And so he wants you to know that your salvation has been taken care of, that he keeps you saved. He keeps it where no demon can possess you. All right. That's his job after you come to him and ask him to save you. Once you do that, friends, then he takes over. All right. And then we're possessed by the Holy Spirit. And it is forever. He didn't just seal you just until you do your next, till you sin again. You've been sealed forever. It's not based upon how good you are. It's not based upon your behavior. This is what God wanted us to have. This was a mystery that nobody didn't know about until the prophets start preaching that Jesus was coming, the Messiah was coming. But it was a mystery. They just didn't know how God was going to do this. Then it became revealed where Christ will live on the inside of us forever and ever. We are perfect in our standing in Christ. I'm not saying we're not perfect in our behavior. We're not perfect in our thoughts. We'll never be, not with this type of body that we have. But when Jesus comes, he's going to give us a body like he has, and it's going to be a perfect body. Okay. We don't have to worry about sin in our flesh anymore. All right. And, um, I just wanted to uh, give comfort, especially to Christians that may think that they can be possessed by demons. And I also wanted you to know how a person can be demon possessed. Okay. And um, I hope this video has been helpful. I hope it has been for the saints. It's been of comfort. And if you're not saved, I hope it has giving you something to think to, to think about um, whether you want to accept Jesus. I hope that you do, and I pray that you do. It's the best decision that you can ever make on this earth while you're still living. Don't wait. Don't think that, don't say that you're going to wait till you become older. Do it now. We're seeing a lot of crazy things that's going on in our world today. 
You know, you got leaders that want to hurt people that are becoming violent. You know, and a lot of this stuff, like I said, uh, one thing about with these demons, they are they are violent. They like to kill. That's what they love to do. The Bible said the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what he does. And he influences people and he possesses people to, to do this type of thing. But the Bible also says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So saints, be encouraged. Don't be fearful. Invite God's protection and blessings over you each and every day. Don't take your life for granted. And I thank you so much for coming back to the beauty of grace. And I hope you have a blessed week.